Hey YouTube, welcome back to Universe X. It's Chris, and uh, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you guys for helping me reach 100 subscribers. That is the first of many benchmarks. Um, I have off tomorrow because I wanted to go see the Broly movie and it just happened to line up. But at the same time, tomorrow I'm gonna upload a congratulations for 100 subscribers video. Uh, I'm going to do the drawings for the cards and uh, I'm gonna announce the YouTubers that are uh, well the people's accounts that are going to be getting the cards and um, we can talk about how to contact me and whatnot in that so that being said um, moving on this is my locals deck profile part two of swole nato aka broly storm and um yeah i just wanted to go into the card choices uh just like before i'm going to do my mvps and then my uh my cards that i just didn't really like um, and then I'm going to go into some of the plays, some of the things that made it fun for me, my matchups, and then we'll close it out. So uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into it. So um, first, like before, I'll just go over my side deck. Um, the first two cards were two adoptive father, son, Gohans. Um, I basically just wanted to make sure that, you know, if I needed to, I could slow down my game, um, especially if I was playing against other Storm decks. Uh, I feel like I personally, as a player, do better at becoming the uh, wall instead of the super aggressor when it comes to a aggro versus aggro matchup. Um, that's actually how I got my top at uh, <clears throat> Otakon's regionals. I played nothing but blue-red all day, and I was playing blue-red Harutagarn, and every time I just turned my entire game plan into being the defensive player instead of the wall or instead of the aggressor and uh the quote-unquote red blue i say quote-unquote storm because they didn't really know what true storm was back then um would try to lean into me and eventually they would combo out and i would shotgun them back and <clears throat> just be better at the defense than they were the offense uh, i had more negates than average i uh may i side decked a few negates um, and it's just, that's how that is. So I just wanted Gohans so I could shift my game plan up a little bit. Um, the next two cards actually kind of go towards the same little bit. I had two Gines, um, and that's also just that I can slow down the game a little bit. Have my apes out play this, have my Bardock out play this, and uh, <clears throat> that was just for that. Um, the next three cards, or two cards, sorry, were two. Uh, Sun Goten, Family of Justice. Um, you always need these in here when your opponent can potentially be playing Child's Wish into uh, Android 16s and stuff like that. Or just revenge blockers that aren't, or blockers that could be turned into revenge blockers with King Vegeta. There's a lot of reasons why this card is good. But um, it's easily searchable. I run three Planet Vegeta. And by the way, <clears throat> the uh, I'm sorry, I had this cough. The link is going to be down there for the previous video. Um, and But yeah, these just... They ludicrous people. They, they move people out the way, move B, and that's pretty much what they do. Um, I could not go into this locals playing two Shugesh and not siding Chrono and myself. Shugesh is just too strong. Um, I am always kind of a fan for siding out cards that have similar slots. I had two Time Patrol trunks, or two uh, trunks over power over seeing Shugeshes, and so I just had a uh, I played two mass sand on the side just in case I need a board clear instead of the recycling. And also for decks that are siding into Kronoa, Shugesh is going to be a lot less useful. And that means Trunks is a lot less useful because that's the main card I end up recycling. So the mass sand is just coming at that point. Or in the case of uh, my Janimba matchup, I would side, I sided these in on top of the uh, two Trunks just so I could just have more overall threats. Two battering for obvious reasons. Two more cold bloodlust for not so obvious reasons. <laughs> I mean, and by that I mean like they they you'll just hear about it later. And my fourth Nimbus. So um that was my side deck for locals last night. And then the other segment of this that I always like doing are the cards that were surprisingly good and the cards that uh, were just the MVPs and the you know LVPs. So, well, least most LMVP? What? 
ever. The point is, first on this list, <clears throat> I've always liked this guy. He's really, really, really fun. And when you're playing in this sort of game, it's just kind of funny because I felt like not being blue bay storm the untap is more limited because you don't have unyieldings and so you have to make the most out of your energy so the turn where you get to go second and your turn is you know energy swing with broly bardock go 10 and you get those two swings off this dude is just sitting here you may have a fat hand but you have no just defense you have no energy open to do so and so when they go hmm, i'm gonna sacrifice my leader swing and combo five on top just to kill this Goten. Wrong. He's 25k. Or when they play something and instead of going for your face with a crit, they take a life and then swing for 15k at your Goten. Wrong. You just play some Goten. And that's actually just what's good. Goten on Goten action and. Pause. Goten <clears throat> will just protect himself. It's really, really, really fun. Also, it makes your apes darn near untouchable like i mean your opponent already knows like they swing and you block and they're like oh i'm gonna take this chance to combo 10k or 15k on my leader to make sure that are on this card to make sure that bardock just dies you know bardock's gonna get pushed off the field and you're just like 35k and you don't even use a super combo and it's just it's gross so that is pretty cool. Um, the next card that performed just above and beyond is no surprise. The Nasty himself, Mr. Shugesh. Um, bro was just too freaking gross. Um, <clears throat> dude would cheat out. Most of the time, almost every time, he cheated out preface. Um, just so I can untap two. That's, that's essentially why Shugesh is in here. I don't have... Per se unyielding but i do have an untapped two liter <clears throat> and um i have preface to come out and just untap two more and then provide another swing this guy allows me to extend plays so hard the other things i could put out are this guy or this guy now this is kind of the auxiliary play but if i put out this guy and blow up something you have tapped <clears throat> it's just pretty good at that point and then if i have the two energy open i can swing with him for a swing swap into this guy draw two and then swing again so it's just adding more and more attacks it may not be unyielding based but i could still swing seven eight nine times in a turn just because of the goten's already on board my leader shoot gash into this guy into this guy into shoot gash into this guy. like it's it's gross. Plus the um, plus the sensu beans and whatnot. It's just there's a whole lot that can be said about this. Not to mention that uh, this dude has some funny combos, like playing this guy and uh, using his uh, his ability, his first ability, well, second, uh, his activate main to tap something down. Then midway through my combo, he's I shoot this guy in and blow it up and then get an attack in and. Then, there's all sorts of cool little combos that you can do with this. Um, the next card that performed above expectations was Bardock. Um, this deck still has the same storm mentality. Get them down to two or four life and then double strike them twice. And um, that's the whole thing. I didn't run Chompas in this particular build because I felt like energy wise you're way more just tight because you're not a blue leader but to compensate for that we put bardocks out and we put pressure with those every turn we uh put this guy out we put pressure on him and basically you can loop these guys and we can side in mass sands so these are my double strike pressure and when you're doing this on turn two sometimes it's a lot for your opponent to be able to block and then on top of that, you know, if you're on turn two going off with shoe Geshes and you're swinging with this guy and you use Broly's effect to take a life and untap him and swing him again, and then you play this dude and get your shoe gash back and swing in. The amount of swings that you can get in with this deck is pretty stupid. Um, then 
The second one is right on there. The next one is right on the table. Right on the table. Um, this guy was always good, but I just love him so much more. Recycling Shoe Gash is amazing. Being a sand be searched by Planet Vegeta is amazing. Having him come down, swing for 30k because you're going to use the Shoe Gash on his swing to untap two mana with preface and then taking a life to have him swing again. Uh, amazing. This card put in so much work last night. Then, the last card of the MVPs is actually really funny. I put him in as a joke at two. Then I took him down to one because it was late last night and I knew I wasn't going to have time to deck edit. And I just didn't really know what card I was going to fit in. So we just kept one of them in. And this card actually turned out to be very, very funny. Um, 30k on a beater without any combos is nothing to scoff at. And um, I know my last match, even though I lost it, there was a game where I put so much pressure on uh, one of my best friends when he was playing Janimba by, it was like the, the I think it was the first, no, it was the second turn of the game. Um, I swung with my leader, took a life, drew a card, played Bardock. And I went first, and that was the uh, that was one of the issues. It's kind of weird. I played Bardock, and uh, tapping my only blue energy, took a life. Didn't have Gotens or anything to swap into. Swung with Bardock, since you on him, untapped the yellow, swapped the Bardock back to hand, played Bardock again, took my fourth life at that point. Because turn one, I just played Bardock and swapped it back to hand. Took my fourth life, swung with Bardock, and then... Uh, I just shoegash this. And I know that sounded like really, really weird. So I guess I'll just show you guys what that turn looks like for me. And maybe I'll do this more often when it just doesn't feel weird. So um, what I had had was my leader. <clears throat> and I went... Oh, this isn't going a little too long. <clears throat> but uh, had the leader, swung, took a life, drew. Tap, Bardock, swing, tap, Sensu Bean, untap. Bardock swapped back to hand, played this again, played Bardock, picked up my fourth life, swung with Bardock, Shugesh. 30k beater on turn two and <laughs> my opponent had a very hard time dealing with this um, I was able to swing it put pressure on his deadly defenders it drained his hand and he did come out with the W in the end so that is that um, now moving past all that the only card that really didn't perform never felt like I had a good spot was this one because the only times I played it like I played I had it in hand for storm and you don't really have a chance to you know bloodlust against storm um, I had it in hand for Janimba but his best cards have deflect and he never actually played his at all costs so in the end this card didn't work out um, overall my first matchup was a uh, reanimator Shenron where they use you know the world piece to bring back some fatties from the graveyard um, it was 2-0 the first game. I just overpowered um, my good friend with Shugesh. And then the second game, he got a turn one Cronoa. But this deck just has some juice. I was able to put too much pressure on the board before it can get up to four energy. And that was just pretty much it. My second game was against Androids. And a Revenge Death Ball hurt a lot. But game one, again, I was just able to power through him on that one. And then game two... I had uh, two apes set up, two Bardocks set up, and at that point, I was just using, um, it kind of got into an elongated, like a, a kind of weird game state. Uh, turn three was a little late for me, but I went first, so he didn't get to set up his uh, thick android, and I was afraid I was going to get cell chain, so I just pushed as hard as I could to get the cards out of his hand, and so the uh, last two turns of the game, it was just ape swing, ape swing, play trunks, get back my other trunks swing and then he would do what he does and i would just get back to my turn and do the same stuff and it just like took too much out of him um game two if that wasn't game two one of the games i did end up doing that one of them was a quick blowout um last round i played against my friend vasquez and uh it's just he had it 
he had the wall to my unstoppable force. He was the immovable object. I could not get past his defense. Um, he had the counters. He had the super combos. And when um, he applied deadly defenders at the right time <clears throat> and pick and chose when to really go in on the defense. And it was just, I, I got walled. Um, the first game I decked out. And so the second game I tried to adjust my strategy. And that was the game where that I was talking about where I got the... Uh, the big fatty championship pack card out. And I thought I was going to win off of his back because I really drained um, his hand. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't enough. So, um, yeah, I'll just take it back to face cam and we'll finish out the video. So, there you got it. Let's uh, make this stick. I think the name is cool for Burly Storm. Uh, let's coin it. Hashtag Swolnado. Leave it in the comments. Uh, let me know if there's anything else I could do. You know this content is fun for me but it's about getting stuff that people want to watch so i want to keep doing that um next week i'm going to my locals is actually going to have a um a sealed event for clash of fates so i won't be uploading one of these videos for next week but the week after that i will get back to my original plan of running uh humans the power of earthlings and that should be fun but yeah remember like comment subscribe hit that notification bell thank you guys for watching as always, have a good time. Night thing. Night.